just trying to live my dream. A minute to win it. I'm ready to line you up. Hello everyone and welcome to Making the Cut, where three aspiring barbers will compete for a full scholarship here at the Bay Area Hair Institute in South San Francisco, California. I'm your host, Anton Curra. Let's meet the judges. First, we have Shane Nesbitt, owner and proprietor of the San Mateo Zoo and Shane's Barbershop from San Mateo, California. Next, we have Derek D. Rock Pexen, owner of Black and Gold Barber Lounge in Daly City, California. Last but not least, we have Vic, the Barber Damone, owner of Timeless Barbershop in Morgan Hill, California. Welcome, judges. Let's meet the contestants. Anthony O'Hara. Paul Mogannum Jr. Daniel Porter. What makes you think that you will make the cut? I think I have the skill level and I'm very determined. My ambition and desire will help me succeed. I have what it takes and it will inspire me to do way harder than I have to Our first challenge will be a ball fade with at least one inch length on top. Remember, this is your chance to make your statement. Putting the best effort forward will allow you to make the cut. Challengers, we ask you to bring in your own models. To add a twist, models, can you step to your right and you step over to Anthony, please? Challengers, here are your new models. Good luck. Switch the, the clients, and when I was thinking about cutting my brother already, I was just okay. I got this. I'll do this first. I'll do that. And once they gave the word, oh man, my head just flipped. I was. Contestants, are you ready? Models, please have a seat. Contestants, you have 30 minutes. The challenge starts now. clear about the minimum length, which was at least uh, one inch. All three barbers, I don't think they knew. But like about ster sterilization with the quads. You know, that haircut they gave us, an eight to a bald fade, that's a pretty detailed haircut. You know, it's, it's a pretty hefty haircut. Like, it's similar to what I have. You know, you're going from a darker length all the way to a bald length. And doing that haircut, you know, it's, uh, it's a lot of blending, it's a lot of uh, different leveling and fading the hair. You don't want to have that line showing. And uh, at the same time, you don't want to go too far up with your fade and you don't want to be too, too low. And you, pretty much you don't want that line that show. You want everything to be blended equally and have it all looking right. That's the hardest part. Paul had a really big open, open cut or scrape or burn or something on his left, left. left wrist. From Anthony, he had no um, type of interaction with his client, so there was no really customer service. The only thing that what I was thinking about was finish. Just finish right now, you know what I mean? The world of home, that's a big thing for me. I mean, every, every dark spot, you, you can lighten up a lot easier. Spinning the chair and using your chair is a big thing for me. Yeah, it's definitely a tool. I've definitely seen these two guys using uh, a little bit too much force when they're fading. Yeah, when you can basically see the head bouncing off of the clipper, that, that means that somebody's using you know, too much shot uh, for us. And Daniel, on the other hand, did have, you know, what I what I seen was he had a very light touch. And but he wasn't using any uh, comb or a brush to dust off the, uh, the client. I guess I was thinking in my head, like, what are they thinking? Like, should I 
not do this or should I fade this in a little bit more or uh, did I take the wrong step? Did I miss something? It was cool having them, you know, watch me. I try not to focus in on them a lot, but you know, I couldn't change the fact that they were there watching. Wrap it up, we have about two bits. They were explaining to us how to, to cut our time down from the comb and stuff, and that kind of helped, but I was nervous <laughs> the whole time. I was real nervous. I had the butterflies, I had spiders, I had every single creature running around in my stomach, you know. <laughs> um, I was pretty nervous, you know. I never had these many cameras in my face. I got these four big barber names judging me and just looking at them and hearing them whisper like this, this, that, he's not doing that right, he's not doing that right. I'm just like, oh crap, and I'm time limits going, like everything, all the pressure's on you, all eyes are on you. I kind of feel like all of them had things that were really good, you know, and then some of them had things that were bad. Each of them had things that they did that they it looked like they knew what they were doing, and then some stuff was like, you know, they still got a lot to learn though. Second. Our first challenge is now complete. Daniel, your personality is huge for your barber career. Very charismatic, outgoing, uh, friendly, personable. Um, I like what you did when you sat the client down. Uh, you definitely sparked conversation with him, made him feel comfortable in the chair with you. You draped him correctly with the next strip, but it was a, an inch on top. And you cut it down to a four, which virtually cut damn near all the hair off. Personally, the way you are very gentle with the clippers, that's my kind of barber. If I'm getting my head flicked and my head's going like this while I'm getting a haircut, I'll, I definitely wouldn't go back to them. So personality is great, good customer service. Out of all three of you guys, if your skills were up a little bit better, you'd be my barber. Paul, um, yeah, you're pretty much the most lively guy in the group, I think. So by far, I mean, you, you um, have a lot of personality. But what was a big thing that stuck out to us was um, your open wound on your arm, like that's, um, you should have been able to cover that up. Um, just because it's uncomfortable for your clientele if they've seen that on your hand as you're cutting, you know, and it's also unsanitary for you. Paul, good customer service, great customer service, better than mine, I think. You finished first on all the guys, you were doing some steps that I kind of thought, wow, this guy's gonna take a long time on this cut, but Fade looked good at the end, you put a salvage on it made it happen, which I was impressed with. I really didn't think you were gonna finish, and you finished. Anthony, I liked everything you did, minus the fact you're very unrelaxed, spilling your stress over onto your client, but I like the way you use clipper over comb. That shows that you are actually a step ahead. The big thing that you did was using your chair. You eliminated walking around the chair, and you know, you kept it easy on yourself. That looked really professional, that kind of had me keep my eye on you like um, I've seen a lot of technique that I do use I didn't see any type of like customer service any interaction with the client I just kind of felt like you were just kind of just trying to jam through the haircut and show that you were you know the best cutter rather than the best barber so to be a great barber you have to be very communicative with the client it would be a blessing to to actually win this competition I could have done better I could have done way better but I think I gave it all I gave it my all, so we'll have to see. The fact that I got the opportunity to, you know, get a scholarship is amazing. You know, I'm playing sports in high school, and you know, you always wanted to get a scholarship to the college, and it's hard to get that. So for me to get one to Barber College is like, man, it's like a dream. Well, it's not really a goal to get the scholarship. It's a goal to become a barber. So throughout the whole thing, um, for me to get my license would be the best thing. Like, I'll be so proud of that. Well, I'll be so proud of myself. It's eating away at me right now. Like, I want to know who's moving on. I want to go home. I commend you all. You guys all have done a great job today. Uh, unfortunately, someone has to go home. Um, I like to say that, you know, you guys all have a bright future ahead of you. And if you guys stick to your game plan, then you will be a great barber. Um, unfortunately, um, there's only two guys that can move on from this point. Uh, the judges have deliberated and they've made a decision. 
Daniel, unfortunately, you did not make the cut. I definitely should have had a, a brush or a comb in hand. I forgot my comb at home and my uh, hair duster. So right when I got here, it kind of, uh, I kind of just remember by, by that time it was too late. So, you know, can't really take it back, but I wish I could. I guess everything happens for a reason. It's not the last you're gonna see of me. It's just, uh, you know, it's the beginning of something big. So can't wait to start this journey. On the next episode, of making the cut. Despite a courageous effort, Daniel unfortunately did not make it to the next round. The stage is now set for Paul and Anthony to go all out and lay everything on the line. The judges will give them the strategies for victory as they place them under unfamiliar conditions. They will be pushed to their limits with grueling back-to-back -back challenges to decide which one will win the scholarship and make the cut.